Radiation is hazardous, but it's important that we can accurately assess the risks involved. And there are two risks that are associated with using radioisotopes. The first is contamination. That's when a radioactive material becomes present on another material. A contaminated object becomes a source of radiation after you've taken away the contaminating source. So you've left, if you like, some radioactive particles on an object that wasn't radioactive before. Importantly, the contaminated object becomes radioactive itself. It itself becomes a source of radiation. Irradiation just means exposure to radioactive particles. So an irradiated object doesn't become itself radioactive. So once you've removed the irradiating source, it's no longer radioactive. So irradiated objects don't become radioactive. So there's a difference between those two risks. It's not that one is more or less risky per se, because you could have a really high intensity of irradiation or a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of contamination, but they are different risks. Now this is all about knowing the difference between radiation and the radioactive material itself. A radioactive isotope gives out radiation. Radiation itself doesn't give out any more radiation. So an alpha, a beta or a gamma doesn't go on to give out more radioactive particles. It doesn't make the things it hits radioactive. It just does one ionization and then it's dealt with, it's gone. Whereas a radioactive isotope continues to keep giving out radiations. Whereas a sample of radioactive material just keeps giving out radiations. So you need to be able to know those two hazards, those two risks, and use them correctly when you're discussing the dangers associated with radiation. You need to be able to compare them. So for example, skin that's irradiated by alpha is pretty low risk as alpha doesn't penetrate the dead skin. And the skin doesn't become radioactive once that irradiation stops. However, if your skin gets contaminated by an alpha source, then it continues to irradiate that skin until the contamination can be removed. So we need to take appropriate precautions when we deal with radiations. And this comes down to limiting the time of exposure and by using appropriate shielding. Now, depending on the type of irradiation, we're gonna choose a different way of shielding. And depending on the intensity of the radiation, we're going to choose how long we need to limit the radiation for. We must use precautions to avoid contamination. So a lot of the time we wear the protective clothing so that we can actually get rid of that protective clothing so that it doesn't contaminate other things that we're going to spend a lot of time near. And we also need to publish our, our findings. We need to publish our findings into the effects of radiations on human beings to allow what we call peer review. Peer review is when other scientists check the results and the conclusions of scientific reports.